Hey coders, welcome to Coding Coding with NJ. This tutorial that you are currently watching is actually part 9 of our e-commerce series that we are building without any frameworks or libraries. Backend is PHP based and frontend is all JavaScript, HTML and CSS. We are building this e-commerce website in a RESTful style. That means our backend is sending just data and we are making API request over backend from frontend using fetch API and then once we get the data, we are displaying that data according to our own test. We are building this web application with our front-end and back-end being two independent domains. So you will also learn the nitty-gritty details of communicating between two different websites. And one last thing before we move on to our today's tutorial is that we are also building this application as a single page application. Okay, so that was the overall introduction of our project. Now let's talk about what we are going to do in this particular tutorial. So in our last two tutorials of the series, we learned how to implement a session-based card for our guest users and then database table-based card for our registered users. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn to implement the checkout process. So before we get our hands dirty with coding coding, let me give you an overview of what we are going to build today. This checkout logic that we are going to implement today is going to be a very basic but a complete checkout-based logic in which the user will be detected amount using some card as well. And we are going to implement this logic using services from a payment gateway named Stripe. So before we get our hands dirty with code and sorting, let me give you a demo of what we are going to build today. So currently, as you can see, I'm not logged in. So let's put some items in our cart. Let's add one more. This out of stock and this one. Okay. Now we have two items. Let's click on it. And we have these two items in our cart. Let's click on the checkout. So now over, over here you can see we are being asked some, some very basic information such as the name of the customer. Because when these items are delivered to the customer through mail, we need to have the name of the customer. And since it's a guest user, that means we don't know that user's name. So now we are asking for the name. So let me put something, some random street. Now for the street, again something random, let's say 12 Northwest City ABC postcode 121212 something random submit and we got redirect to the a payment gateway named Stripe and this is the amount that we have done the shopping for so over here we have to provide the email of the customer let's say something random qqq at qq.com and since this is a demo project and we are using the Stripe's uh, test services as well. So the only card that we can put in as a valid card is 424242. Name on the card something random again. Okay. Postcode 121212 something. Click pay. And now we got redirected to a page with success in it. So currently I haven't put anything in that page except for the check success. Okay, so now we need to go and check out that if this payment has actually been made. So let's go to our Stripe and this is our Stripe dashboard. Let me go to the payments and this is the most recent one that we just made with the QQQ as email address. And if you notice, this is a payment, $168.11. So we have successfully made this payment. Now let's go and check our database. We need to have some record over here as well in the product table. Okay, this is product table already. So this is the name. 12 Northwest was the address that we put. The city was ABC and this is the information. And this payment ID is the same payment ID that we have got in the Stripe. So this is the same payment ID over here. So once the payment has been made, then this particular business can come and check if currently the order status is pending, but we can go to Stripe and look for this particular payment ID and see the status over the year. So now it says this particular payment has been made successfully. That means we can change the status from over here from pending to success and from and once the status has been changed to success, then the next process in the workflow begin where the items are being packaged and mailed to the customer. But that part is obviously we have not implemented. We are only implementing the checkout process. 
Now, if you notice over here in the column user ID, many fields are null except for this one. So, when a customer is being checked out as a guest customer, that means in this column we won't have any value in it, rather, we will have null values in it. And when a registered user is being checked out, we will have user ID over here. In that case, we won't even be asking for the user's name. So, this is the order table which will contain the journal information regarding the order. Now, the actual items in the order can be found in this order item table. So, we are going to look for order items with the order ID 17. So, let's go to the order item. Now, this table contains the information regarding all the particular products that the customer has bought. So, if you notice, we have two columns, sorry, we have two rows with the order ID 17, that is the most recent checkout that we just did. And it has two products with the product ID 4 and product ID 13. Quantity for both is 1. And if you add up those two values together, you will get 168.11. So, we basically have two tables. The order table which contains an ID column and then user ID. This one is a foreign key with the user table. However, this particular column can be null in case our user is a guest user. In that case, we will not have any value in this particular column. Then we have name for the user. So, if the user is a registered user, the name of the user will not be asked at the front end because we already have in our users table. However, if the customer is a guest customer, in that case, name will also be asked. Then this is the address field, city, postcode, total price. So, this is the total price of all the products and these are the payment IDs of these price. So, using these IDs, you can actually go to that particular payment and check its status and then you can change the status over here. And then for the order item, we have this ID field then in this order ID which is a foreign key with the order table with the ID column in the order table then product ID is again a foreign key with the ID table in the products table quantity and price. So now let's go and do shopping as a registered user and see how the process continues. Let's log in. AAA is a user, a registered user. Now we already have one item in this particular cart. So this user has already put one item in the cart. Let's go and put something. Two items. Let's add one more. Three items. Now let's go to cart. And now the price is 1199.98. So let's go check out. And since we already know the name of the user, so that's why we don't see a field with the name name in it. We only have to provide the address or something. 40, 40 street, city, something, postcode again, something, submit, 1199.98 dollars, email, let's make it LL at LL.com, if we are in the test mode, we can only verify this process using this particular card number, so 1123, name on the card, let's make it LL as well and put, put again LL. Again we have successfully made this payment. Now let's go to database first and let's check the order. The user ID, the user AAA has the user ID 1. Let's verify this. Let's go to user table and we only have one user, registered user AAA with the ID 1. So this one has user ID 1 as well, name is AAA. We didn't provide this name at the time of checkout. This has been taken from the registered user's triple. Then street and the price and this is the payment ID. PI3495 and ending is QOW. Let's go to Stripe. Let's refresh. PI3M95 QOW LLL at LL.com. So we have this price. We can a look at the further information as well if you are interested. Okay, so this is the Stripe payment gateway which we will be using. So now we are all set and ready to implement this whole logic from the scratch. So let's get to it. So for the checkout logic implementation, the first thing that we need to do is that we have to attach an event listener with the checkout button. So this one. Currently, if we click on this checkout button, nothing happens. 
because we haven't attached any event listener to this button. So we have attached an event listener with this button, but first let's inspect this and figure out its name so that we can quickly identify where to go, where to go in the code. So this button has a class name checkout hyphen button and it's in, it must be in the car.js file. Go to car.js and look for checkout hyphen button. So this is the checkout button. Now we have detect an event listener with this one. So checkout btn dot add event listener. Click and let's give it the name, the callback function name, checkout. Now we are going to define this checkout button in its own separate file, checkout.js. So let's create a file named checkout, checkout.js and, and associate this checkout with HTML as well, our HTML file. So text.html. Checkout.js. Okay. Let's go to checkout.js. Function checkout. Let's console log checkout button. Click. Let's see if the logic so far works. After checkout button clicked. Okay. Let's close this car.js file and index.html as well. Now we have to define the logic over here. So once this checkout button is clicked, we should be redirected to another page where a form will be displayed in which the user has to provide the delivery address. And if the user is a guest user, the user has to provide his or her name as well. So let's comment this out. Now the first thing that we need to do over here in order to display the form is that we have to clear out the page. So therefore, we need to get a reference to the main HTML element. Now we have to erase its contents. So main dot inner HTML equals empty contents. Now let's create a div which is going to hold the form. Comps form div element div. Let's give it class name form div as well. Let's create a h2 element for the heading. And this h2 is the first child of form div. So form div dot append child h2. Now let's create the actual form. So const address form document dot create element form address form dot class name. Now we have to create input fields for address, city, postcode, as well as the name if it's a guest customer. Since the name is going to be optional depending on whether the customer is a guest customer or registered customer. So what we are going to do is that we are going to create the input fields which are going to be part of both the customer's forms. So cons address document or create element input. Address dot type equals text. This is a text input field. Let's give it name. Address as well. Address dot placeholder is going to be address as well. Let's append this address input field to the address form. So address form dot append child address. Now we have to create another input field for the city. So what 
I'm going to use that. I'm going to copy these contents and let's change the name from address to city. Okay, now one more for the postcode. First, change the name from address to postcode. Let's create one more input field for the submit button. So const submit document create element input submit of type equals submit. We don't need to provide any more information. Address found that and child submit. Okay, so these are the fields which are going to be part of any form. Either it's a guest customers related form or registered user related form. Now we have to work on the optional input field, which is only present if it's a guest user. And if it's a registered user, we won't see that input field. So in order to figure out when to display that input field, we have to check the login status. So that means we have to make a fetch call to our backend and ask for the login status. If it's a logged user, then we will get the name of the user. In that case, since the name is there, we don't need to attach input field. However, if the name is guest, then in that case, that customer is not a registered customer. So we will attach an input field in this form. So we have to make a fetch call. Since we are already making this fetch call in the login.js file. So let's go there. The function name is check login status. Okay. So this is the function. In this function, we are making this fetch call. So we are going to copy this. paste it over here we have to change this function name otherwise we will be redirected to this function which displays information in a certain way and here we are not interested in changing any front end appearance or anything we only want to check if the particular user is a registered user or a customer so we have to provide another callback function over here login status response let's give it that let's give it that name So over here we have to check if data.user if it is equal to guest in that case we are going to attach another input field to the form so let's copy yes now change the name from postcode to name. Now we have to make one more change over here. That is, if we do this, start a pen child. Since this is the very last input field that we are attaching, so the name will be attached at the very end. Since we want the name to appear at the very top, we have to change this from append child to insert before. The input field that we are attaching is name and now as a second parameter we have to provide HTML element. We want to insert this name before. So we have to provide the name of the very first child of this form. So at this form the first element child. So now this address is attached at the very first child. Okay, so now our form is complete. Now we have to attach this form to the form div and then we have to attach the form div to the main element. Have we already attached it? We haven't attached the form div to the main. So we have to do these two things. Okay, so form div dot append child address form and then main dot main dot append child form div. Now we should be able to see this whole form when we click on the checkout button. 
Okay, so we can see the address field and since we are logged in, so that's why we can't see the name field. However, we need to work on the CSS styling of this form as well. So what we are going to do is that we are going to our CSS file. style.css and we have to give it the same styling that we have given to our login and registration form. So control F dot login. We have to look for login form or something here. Yeah. Over here let's let's attach address form as well. And comma address form asterisk let's go down copy comma paste and change it from register to address oh, that's better but i think there's still something wrong with the styling because this isn't the styling that we get with the login and registration form. So let's go uh, and check. Oh, it's address dot form, not from. Yeah, that's better. Now the next thing that we have to do is that we have to attach an event listener with the form such that when we fill in this data over here in these input field and click on this submit button, a request should be sent to the backend along with the, along with this data so that the checkout process should continue at the backend as well. So let's go and work on that part now. So we have to attach an event listener with the form. So address form dot add event listener and the event that we are interested in is submit when this form is submitted. The callback function that we want to associate with this event listener is send checkout request. Now let's define this function. Let's pass this one, the event object which is created when this event is triggered, so that we can call this event default on it. Now over here, we need to make a fetch request to the backend and send the data which is inside the form along with that request. So we are going to create an object of type form data. And over here we have to pass the form and since this event is associated with the submission of the form that means inside this function we can access the form through its this keyword so we are going to pass this to this form data now this form data contains all the data from our input fields next we need to make a fetch call to our backend and the endpoint that we are going to hit is checkout.php. The callback function that should be that should be executed once we get the response back from the server is response and checkout. Let's make it shorter. Now we are interested in making a post request. So third parameter is host and the fourth parameter is going to be the data which is going to come from the form data object. Now we have to define this function as an inner function. This is going to receive all the data from the fetch response from the backend. So for the time being we are simply console logging whatever we receive from the backend. Now we have to work on our backend. So let's go to our backend and create this file checkout.php. Now in all of the PHP files, we have been including this file db.php. 
because this contains database connectivity as well as all the headers that are needed to communicate between different domains. Those headers are also set in that db.php file. But in this particular file, checkout.php, instead of including this db.php file, we are going to include this logged user card.php file. And because this file already contains this db file, therefore we don't need to explicitly include this db file over here as well. So let me just include this file first and then I'll tell you the reason for including this log user card file over here. So in the current folder, we have a folder named include. There we have a file named log user card.php. Now let me tell you the reason for including this file. Since our checkout session depends heavily on the contents of the card, therefore we need to have access to the customer's card. Now if the customer is a guest customer, that means the whole card is available through the session variables. Therefore we don't need to include the guest user card.php file over here. We can access the session variables from here. But if the customer is a registered customer and he is currently logged in, that means his or her card is available through database tables. And in order to access or manipulate that card, we must have to use the functions which are defined in this file. So therefore, we have to include this file over here. Now, we are ready to receive the request and serve it from the customer. But we are only going to serve the requests which are type HTTP post type. So we have to check if server request type equals post, then we are ready to serve this request. Now inside this if block, we are going to handle the checkout process slightly different depending on if the customer is a guest customer or a logged in customer. So therefore we have to create another if block if dollar sign underscore session logged user. So if it's a logged user, then the logic is going to be defined over here. Else if it's a guest customer, then the logic is going to be defined over here. But before we define any of the logic for these if and else, else blocks, let's go outside the main if block and define some global variables. The reason for defining some global variables is that we are going to be dependent on data which is going to be used by multiple functions that we will define in this file. So rather than passing the data between these functions, I'm going to define some variables as global variables so that all the functions can have access to those global variables. So let's first create a function name, sorry, a variable named card, then another one, logged user ID, card ID, portal card, name, strike data. Okay, since we are going to use Stripe Payment Gateway, which is going to collect payment from the customer on our behalf, so we have this variable which is in which we are going to store information which we receive from the Stripe once we make a request to the Stripe. So it will return us some information that we are going to store over here. This card is going to contain the contents of the card. Now either those contents are going to come from the session card or from the database table card. The logged user ID is going to contain a logged user's ID if it's a logged user, otherwise the value of this variable will be null. Likewise, this card ID will only contain value if it is a logged user who is doing the checkout, otherwise card ID will also be null. Total price will contain the total price of all the products times quantities of the card. And this name variable is going to contain the name of the customer who is doing, who is doing shopping. So either this name is going to come from the farm which the guest user has submitted or it's going to come from the log user's name. Okay, now let's go and define the logic for the inner if block. So if it's a log user, we have to put it inside is set. So if so if this variable is set in that case, it's a log user and the name for that user is going to come from log user name. And the log user ID is going to come from session variable log user ID. 
we can also use get user id which is defined in this file log user card as well but over here i have used the session variable since name and ids of log users are also stored in the session variables so i am getting these values from the session variables now for the card id i am going to call a function which is defined in log user card file and we have to pass in log user id so provided this log user id we will be returned a card id for this particular user and for the contents of the card we are going to call get all card items and we have to provide card id as a parameter to it again this function is defined in the log user card.php file as well however if it's not log user in that case the card is going to come from session variable named card and the name is going to come from four super global variable name so in this case log user id and card id are going to remain null now outside this inner if else block we are going to assign some value to total price which is going to come from our card variable since card this card is a two dimensional array and the last element of this card is a one dimensional element named total so the so from the card we are extracting this total and then we are going to unset this total element from the card the reason for unsetting this total element is that since we have already stored the price in this variable total price so after storing the price in another variable we can safely unset this variable in the card array and the reason for that is that for the rest of the contents of this card the structure is same the rest of the contents of card is a two dimensional array so eventually we will iterate through that card using for each loop so if you are iterating through card then it's going to work fine until we reach the end where this total has a different structure so that's why we have stored this total in a, in another variable and then unset this total now we are going to assign some data to this stripe data variable by calling a function initiate checkout we have to define this function and this function takes total price as a parameter okay so once this function does its execution it returns us some data which is an array which is going to be stored in this stripe data array then we will call another function named add to order table so what this function will do it will store the contents of the cart into two tables order and order item tables and finally we want to clear the current contents of the card then we will send the response back to our front end with an array so let's keep this array empty for the time being and exit so now we have to define these three functions now let's define this initiate checkout function is a parameter now this initiate checkout process is basically going to communicate with the stripe api so what we are going to do is that we are going to follow the steps which are provided on the stripe website to integrate a pre-built checkout session with our web application so this is a pre-built checkout page and it consists of different steps so i'm not going to explain this process in detail over here because i already have a beginner friendly series about this stripe where i have explained everything in detail so if you are interested you can go and check out my that playlist over here i'm going to quickly go through steps and integrate this checkout page with our web application so the first step is we have to install a library called stripe/stripe-php so let's go and do that I already have this package installed but I'm going to install it anyway so that you can see it stripe/stripe-php 
now this has installed this package and in, it has created a folder named vendor as well as composer.json and composer.log files so these two folders are inside this vendor folder the next step we have to do is that we have to require a file named autoload.php from that vendor folder with our file since our vendor folder is directly inside inside our root folder of this project so the path for this autoload file is going to be from the current folder which is inside user and in the backend so we are currently in the backend folder so starting from the current folder that is the backend folder we have to go one step up into the user folder and then another step up to a root folder it's in fact let's remove it so go one step up this will take us to the user folder and from there one more step up that will take us to the root folder and there we have a folder named vendor where we have an autoload.php file then we need this stripe key now this key that you can see over here that's my stripe key my secret api key in the test mode i can see this key over here because currently i am logged into the stripe dashboard as well had i not been logged in there i would not have been able to see this key over here but since i am already logged in so therefore this key you can see over here is my key so what i am going to do is that i am going to copy this line then we have to copy this header line as well and then this your domain so copy these three lines paste them over here for this your domain i have to change this domain to my front end domain which is everything that comes before index.php so copy and i'm going to replace this thing with my domain in fact i can cut this from here and bring this in the initiate checkout function as well that's where it's needed okay let's go up now let's go to rebuild checkout the next thing that we have to do is that we have to copy this so what's happening inside these lines of code is that a session object is being created which sends a request to the stripe and the stripe does some job over there and sends the response back into the same object the checkout session object so copy let's go down paste it over here and the only thing that we are going to change over here is that instead of this price which requires price id we don't have this price id so we are going to replace it with price data price data now again i'm not explaining in detail why we are doing this but if you are interested you can go and watch my stripe related playlist there i have explained everything in detail so this tutorial is not about the stripe okay now this stripe data is an array which takes certain elements though so the first one is currency and in our case it's us dollar so usd then the second element is product data which happens to be another array now in this product data the only mandatory element is name which is represents the name of the product so in our case we are going to write customer shopping bill then the third element for this price data is unit amount which in our case is 1 okay that's it now this success url as you can see your domain and then success.html so if this checkout process is done successfully then the customer will be redirected to this success.html file and if something goes wrong during that checkout process then the user will be redirected to the cancel.html page so we have to create these two files in our front end next we have to return some data 
back to the calling function. So we are going to return an array which consists of two elements. The first one has a key named URL and this one is going to contain this checkout session objects property named URL. The second element that we want to return is payment ID. And again, it's going to come from this checkout session objects payment intent. So these two values are being returned to the calling function and stored in this stripe data. Next is this add to order table. Over here, we are going to create data for the order table as well as the order item tables. So we need to access these global variables that we have defined at the top, these ones. So therefore, copy, paste, and we have to prepend each of these with the keyword global. Because we are not defining local variables over here, rather we are using the global variables. So that means these variables already contain data. Now this cart is going to contain the cart, whether it's guest customer or a logged customer. We don't need cart ID over here, rather we are interested in the connection variable, which represents the database connectivity. Now this logged user will either contain an ID or it will be null. So if it's null, we want to store the string null in our database table. So we have to sort this out first. So let's create a variable named user ID and we are going to use ternary operator copy. So if this logged user contains some value in that case, or let's make it if this logged user equals null, in that case store null in the user ID, otherwise, the log user. So this way this user ID will either contain string null which will be converted into null in the database or it will be this user ID. Now let's define another local variable payment ID and we are going to get stripe data's particular element with the key name payment the reason for creating these two local variables is that this way when, when we are defining the SQL statement, it will be a very simple statement and everything can be defined within the single quotations, sorry, within double quotations. So we can use a string interpolation. However, if we had not simplified these two variables, then we would have to break our SQL statement with the dot operator and that complicates the statement and then we lose track of the whole SQL statement. So this way our SQL statement is going to be a simple statement with everything defined within double quotations and no breaks there. Now let's define this statement. But before we define this statement, we need to get the address, city and postcode data from the super global variable. So address is dollar sign underscore post address city post code okay now let's go back to our statement so the statement is going to be insert into table named order. So the column names are user ID, name, address, city, post underscore code. This is the column name inside the database table. Total underscore price. Payment underscore ID, order underscore status. 
parameters and the values are going to be for the user id we have a value in the user underscore id variable then when the second one is name third is address fourth is city fifth is postcode then comes the total price And for the last one, we are going to provide the text pending. Okay, so this is the statement. But before we proceed any further, while entering the value total price, I remembered something, so I need to check if I have missed some data over here. Okay, so this unit amount is not one. It's actually going to be this price. And we have to times it with 100. The reason for multiplying this price with 100 is that, okay, it's a comma. Okay. The reason for multiplying the price with 100 is that the Stripe expects the lowest common denomination of any currency. So for the US dollars, the lowest denomination is cents. Each dollar contains 100 cents. Therefore, we are multiplying the price with 100. This converts the dollars in two cents okay now let's go back on the statement now let's execute statement using connection variable query method and we are passing the statement to this query method now obviously this statement can be this execution can be successful or unsuccessful so ideally we should have defined the logic which handles the case when something goes wrong and the statement is not executed successfully but i'm assuming everything goes smoothly otherwise we will have a lots of failure cases to handle and that would have expanded the length of this video and the focus would have been scattered as well so over here i'm just focusing on the bare minimums and if you notice over here i haven't used prepared statement either just so the code is little bit more simplified okay now once this statement is executed, this connection variable contain a property named insert ID. From there, we are going to get the ID for the row which got inserted into this order table. So we are going to store this in a variable named order ID. Okay. Now using this order ID, we are going to insert rows in order item table for each product in the cart. So let's start that process. So for each cart is ID. So as you remember in our cart, this is a two dimensional array. The first dimension always contains the ID and the second dimension contains different attributes of that particular product. So over here, the ID is going to be stored in this ID variable and the rest of the information is going to be stored in this product variable when we iterate over each of the cart element. So now let's extract quantity in a local variable. Then the product price. Now let's create a SQL statement. Insert into order item. The column names are order ID, product ID. Quantity and price. And the values are going to come from this order ID. Then the product ID is going to come from here, and the quantity and product price are going to come from over here, these two values. So I forgot. Quotations, press back. Okay, now order ID, then the ID, 
then quantity and then product ID that's the actual name prod price so all of these are numeric values or float values so that reminds me we have to go back to our first insert statement now user id is integer value so we don't need to do anything however since name is a string so we have to enclose it inside the single quotation address is again a string so this needs to be enclosed in the quotation city is also string single quotation postcode is also string Total price is float value, so we don't need to enclose it inside the quotations. Payment ID is also a string. It's a quotation. Okay, now let's go back down to a second statement. Now let's execute it. Again, connection, query, and statement. So this will put one row for each of the product in our order item table. Now at the end of this for each loop, we simply return back to the calling function. Okay, so we are done with add to order table as well. Now at this point, we want to clear out the card because the payment has already been made. All the products have been inserted into the order table. The reason for inserting all this information into order table is that otherwise, how will the business people at, the, at this e-commerce website will know who shall this order ship to? So we have to add all this information into order table along with the name, addresses, and what items that customer has bought so that those could be shipped and mailed to that particular customer. So now let's work on the clear card function. So if the, if the customer is a guest user, that is, is said, dollar sign underscore session card in that case simply unset it copy test else it's a large user customer so in that case we have to remove this user's entry from the card table and card items table as well so let's define the statement delete from a table named card where again I view single quotations so control x double quotations test where id equals cart id we only okay we need to get access to global variable cart id as well as connection variable We only need to delete this entry from the card table because in the card item table there is a foreign key which links all of those rows with this ID in the card table. And the properties of that foreign key is that when the row belonging to this ID is deleted in the parent table that is this card, all the rows in the child table that is card item table that have the card ID matching this ID, those will automatically be deleted as well because we have set the on delete to cascade and on update to cascade as well so once this row is deleted from the card which matches this cart id all the rows in the cart item table which matches this cart id in the foreign key those rows will also be automatically deleted we don't need to explicitly delete them so this simplifies our job a lot now we have to simply execute this query and pass the statement and simply return okay so everything is done now let's go back up the only thing that we left out was what are we sending back to our client so what we are sending back to the client is that if you remember this is type data received an array as the execution of this function the first one was payment id and another was url so that url is the one which will contain the link that will take the customer to the checkout page. So we are sending that URL to our front end and from there we will redirect the customer 
to that page. So what we are going to do is that inside this function, in, sorry, inside this array which is being returned back to the front end, we are only passing it one element named URL and to that we are going to send stripe data its URL element. That's it. So our backend is complete. Now for the front end, which was checkout.js, now we know this data contains a property named URL. So what we are going to do is that if data.url, in that case, redirect the user or customer to another location. So window.location equals data.url. This will redirect the customer to that checkout page that you could see where you type in your card's information. Okay. There is one piece of information that we need to attach at the front end from the stripe, which is in our HTML page. And what we need to do over here is that the only thing that we have to do is that we have to attach these two script tags with our index.html file. So index.html and they need to be attached in the head section. So press them over here. And I hope this should work fine now. Let's go and test it out in the browser. Let's refresh. And we are logged in user. So check out. Let's make it address. City. Postcode 11111. We are not being redirected, so there is something wrong. Okay, the reason for receiving that error was over here. If the request type, it's not type, it's method. So that's why the request was never being served by the server. And hence, no matter what you did, you got the response, that JSON error, because no response was returned. So hopefully now it will work fine. Refresh. Check out address, let's say 20 street city my city postcode 111111. Submit and we got this 899. Okay, so now let's fill in the details kk kk.com card number we have to keep on providing this code because this is a test card that's the only dummy card that will be accepted by the by this tribe name some random postcode 1111 oh we forgot to create this success.html file so that's why it says cannot it could not find this file so never mind let's go and check the payments And this is the one with the kk at kk.com, so pi3m9mnz. Now let's go and check our database. So let's open the order table first. Hmm. I think there is something wrong over here because this information has not been added to our database. So that means insert into order hasn't been executed successfully. So let me find out the problem, then we will continue from there. Okay, so I have identified the problem. The problem was, you know, the order table. Let me remove this. So we are inserting, we were actually inserting something into order table. Now order is a reserve word in MySQL or SQL in general. So that's why we have to append it with the database tab, database name, eshop.order. Now it will work fine. Now before we test it out, let's create success.html and cancel.html files as well. So let's create. HTML and let's 
and the body just exit. Let's create one more file. Cancel the HTML. Assignment cancel. Okay. So let's go to our index page. One item, let's put another item. Let's go to checkout. Address is my address, city is my city, postcode is. We are being redirected now over here. Let's be bbhbb.com. Go to, go to, go to. Okay, 1123, 123. Name some random value, post code random value. 112.43. Okay, so we have been redirected to success page. Let's check the payment bbb at bb.com so we have successfully made this payment 112.43 dollars pi 3m9 g6k let's refresh aaa is what the username my address my city 111 the postcode 112.43 pi 3m5 g6k so we have successfully inserted the order table along with the payment id now the next person on this in this business line will look at this payment ID in the Stripe page and it will notice that this payment has been made successfully. Then it will change the status from order status from pending to what shall we change it to? Let's make it prepared or something. Apply finish now. The next person in line will look at this order is being prepared so it will start collecting those items and then dispatch it to the customer. So this is how this whole process will work. So since it is working for the log user, now let's go and let's test it out one more time for the guest user as well. Okay, let's log out. Now let's do some shopping. Out of stock. In stock. There's one item, 92.92 dollars. Easy, easy. Something. Easyasdz.com. Okay, again success. Now let's go and check the database table. Now, as you can see, since the user is a guest user, so there is no user ID. This name it provided while typing in the information related to address and everything. And its payment ID is PI3M. So initials are same, 8QH. So this is a 8AQH and the name is ZZZ. So that means we are able to check out as a guest user as well. So this is the end of our tutorial. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and share. Thank you so much.